Like any business, hospitals and health systems really value the feedback from those they serve. So much so that a 29-question patient survey is required for most U.S. hospitals. But a new report finds that the survey questions may not capture the most revealing parts of the patient experience. In short, it's time for an update. Welcome to Advancing Health, a podcast brought to you by the American Hospital Association. I'm Tom Hederly, Senior Writer with AHA. If you've been a hospital inpatient, then at some point you were probably given a written questionnaire to fill out about how things went. It's called HCAPS. That's the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Providers and Systems. In today's consumer-driven healthcare landscape, these prompt assessments matter a great deal. But the HCAP survey isn't always prompt, sometimes arriving several weeks after a patient's discharge from the hospital. It has other issues as well. A new report from five major hospital associations, including the American Hospital Association, recommends retooling the HCAP survey. Among the suggestions, make it shorter, and for Pete's sake, put it online. Three AHA experts are on hand for today's discussion about how HCAPs can be improved to better represent the patient experience. Moderating the discussion is Nancy Foster, Vice President for Quality and Safety Policy. She's speaking with Akeen Demahan, Director of Policy, and Caitlin Giluli, Senior Associate Director for Behavior Health and Quality Policy. Let's join in as Nancy kicks off the conversation. So Akeen and Caitlin, thanks for being here today to help us understand more about HCAPS. Could you start it by telling me a little bit about HCAPS, uh, sort of set it in context of this whole broad picture of quality and why it's important to have patient experience, not patient satisfaction as a survey. Um, I'm also interested in understanding more about why it's important for patients to take the survey. Sure, so the HCAP survey is actually among the oldest of the quality measures that CMS has required hospitals to report and that have been publicly reported on Hospital Compare. So hospitals began to collect the survey data back in 2006 and the results were available publicly Uh, starting in 2008. What's different about the HCAPS from some of the efforts that came before it to capture patient satisfaction is that this is really a patient experience of care survey. It doesn't just ask about things like, were the staff nice to you? Was the bed comfortable? Was the food good? It actually asks about those aspects of care that reflect meaningful quality and patient safety issues. So it asks about things like communication about medication. It asks about how well physicians and nurses explained what was happening in the course of care. That was a real kind of departure and kind of an aha moment that using the patient's perspective to gather this really important information about quality and safety was really important. For those of you who are tuned into this podcast who are are patients, it's why it is so incredibly important for you to take the time to fill out the survey. It actually helps make the care in hospitals better. Yeah, there's actually a CAP survey for several different settings. Um, You can find information around uh, experience with a home health agency uh, and uh, with skilled nursing, although that that survey is not widely used. Uh, I think this is where we start to find some of the issues with the CAP survey uh, is is really who is being evaluated and what patients have in mind when they're taking some of these surveys. So for example, there has been developed a survey for the outpatient setting. So it's ambulatory care, you're not admitted, you're walking into the hospital, sometimes you're getting a surgical procedure that's happening same day and then you go back home. So CMS has developed uh, an outpatient and ambulatory surgical center survey. The problem with this survey is that it's really difficult for a patient to know who they're surveying. So, so for example, you know, you go in, you get a surgical procedure, you're going to get one survey for uh, your outpatient clinic, you're going to get another survey for your clinician group, and you're going to get another CAP survey for the surgeon. So if you're a patient, who is who? You're not, you're a lay person, you don't know who belongs to which part of this, to the, to the hospital. So first of all, you've got to fill out three surveys. You've just had surgery, you're probably not in the mood to do that. Second of all, It's administratively difficult to keep that patient around. You know, this is an ambulatory patient. They're going to go back home. So you don't really have the captive audience that you have with an inpatient saying, by the way, please take this survey. And third, it's 
not going to get you a lot of reliable data. Uh, you're going to get answers back from the patient who's not clear who he or she is evaluating. So was this the, the surgeon, the clinical group, the hospital outpatient department, the ambulatory surgical center? So, you know, once we look at this family of surveys, it starts to bring up a lot of questions about the usability of the information uh, and, and what we're really getting. So I think that there are there's a lot of promise to HCAPS. There's a topic that it's, it's addressing of patient experience and how patients feel about uh, their time in the facility. But once we start looking at the entire family of surveys, it starts raising questions about how we can best capture this information and actually start using it too. Very interesting. It sounds like it's a great idea to get some unique perspectives on quality that can come from our patients, but it may be a victim of its own success in a way. There are too many surveys uh, that may be competing for attention from the patient. So let's dive a little bit deeper. Would you walk me through how the survey is done, starting with what is being evaluated? Talk to me about how the data are actually captured so people will understand that better. So the survey itself is comprised of 29 questions. 22 of those questions are the actual core of the survey that ask about the patient's experience. And then the other seven items are patient demographic information like race, language spoken at home, and so forth. The survey is not given to every patient that walks through the door. It's given to a sample of adult and patients who are 18 years or older who visit the hospital. There are a number of requirements for how the survey can actually be administered. Hospitals work with survey vendors to actually collect the, pa- the information from patients and submit it to CMS. There are three ways in which hospitals are permitted to actually administer the survey. Uh, one is by mail, uh, the second is by telephone, and the third is by what's called mixed modes, which combines the mailed surveys with a telephonic survey. What you get when you look at the measure results on hospital compare are a series of what are called composite measures. Uh, and they reflect things like physician communication, nurse communication, and so forth. And the score you see is what's called a top box score. Uh, and that's the percentage of the time that patients report the highest possible response on a given question. That's a pretty high standard for hospitals to meet, and it was set that way quite intentionally. Patients actually get the survey anywhere from 48 hours to up to six weeks after they leave the hospital. So it can be a challenge, especially if that survey arrives late, for patients to recall the entirety of their experience inside the hospital. And in terms of the data you see publicly, those results are refreshed once per quarter. And generally speaking, there's a lag of about nine months between when the data are collected and when they first appear. Uh, on Hospital Compare. So we're recording this particular podcast in August of 2019. The data that you see right now reflect performance from October 2017 through September of 2018. So Caitlin, do we know if the data are being used by the public? Well, in terms of being used to actually make choices about where they're receiving their care, the answer is, is really no. We know how patients and consumers, prospective patients, make choices about where they get their care. It's really word of mouth. They ask their friends and their families, their their referring physicians, what do they think is going to be the best place for care. So when you're looking at the relatability of the information they're getting, it's much easier to understand, say, a Yelp review or something from your sister or your, your cousin that they were treated with kindness at this hospital than trying to understand what, say, a top box score means. So... When you drill down even further, there are a lot of nuances about how patients are making decisions based on the procedures they're getting or the conditions they have. So maybe someone looking for neurology care is going to be concerned about some of the quality measures and the outcomes, whereas someone looking for a primary care physician wants some place that's accessible, it's convenient, it's close to their house. So there are so many nuances in how consumers and prospective patients make choices that the HCAP score doesn't reflect that, and the the survey cannot capture that accurately across the entire patient population. So in terms of making decisions on where to get care, the HCAPS doesn't give that information. It gives a lot of useful information to hospitals that we can use, but consumers aren't using it to make decisions. Thanks. Let me follow up on that. So if consumers aren't using it very often, who is using it and for what? Akeen, do you have some answers there? I do. So CMS uses the data in a number of ways. 
Uh, it's publicly reported uh, on the Hospital Compare website. Uh, hospitals are actually required to collect the HCAP survey by CMS, and if they don't, they experience a, a cut to their annual uh, payment update. Uh, it's also used in CMS's pay for performance program called the Hospital Value-Based Purchase Program. And it comprises a quarter of a hospital's VBP score. It's also used in what are called star ratings, uh, both for the HCAP survey itself uh, and the overall star rating that comprises all of the measures or a subset of all of the measures on hospital compare. Uh, and the HCAPs uh, is worth about 22% of that total score. So a critically important measure in a lot of different uses, but maybe not the one it was originally intended uh, for. You all recently uh, helped to conduct a study outlining what patient experience officers thought of HCAPs. This was a way to begin the conversation about how do we improve what's going on. Based on that, what can you say about what HCAPs does well and what needs to be improved? Caitlin? Well, I think one thing that everyone agrees is that HCAPs is vitally important in capturing information around patient experience in general. Hospital leaders all agree that it's just really important to have this information. And the AHA has long supported the, the concept in general of a patient survey and, and getting patient reported uh, experience information. And so I think everyone agreed throughout all of the interviews that HCAPS is, is important. We have to keep working on it. It has a lot of promise. It's undergone decades of development. And uh, we've done a lot of work in, in terms of how to collect the information and do it consistently and ask questions that are going to inform care across various programs that the hospitals participate in, whether that's Medicare programs or commercial payers or patient improve, patient experience improvement, care improvement, those kinds of things. I do think, though, that once you start to look at response rates, it's pretty clear that there is still improvement to be made. So we've seen declining response rates over the past few years. I think in 2017, only about one in four patients who were surveyed actually responded to the survey. So, um, you know, we're not surveying every single patient who comes in the door. And then of those patients we are, we're only getting about 25% of it. So that suggests there are some logistical barriers to asking these questions. It's a long survey. And it's hard to remember your experience several weeks out. So there's some logistical challenges with administering the survey. I think too that some of the topics that are covered by HCAPs are not the most important. When we interviewed these patient experience leaders, they did agree that several of the topics that are asked about on HCAPs are important, should be continued to be asked about and, and addressed, but there are a lot that are just not giving us a lot of useful information that would actually change what we're doing inside our hospitals. Can you give me an example of that? I think an example might be around discharge planning. So, you know, what's really important for a patient to know when he or she leaves the walls of the hospital. Um, so we know that discharge planning, that's an important topic. Some of the other things around food service or the temperature or the sounds within the hospital, while those are important aspects of care, they might not be the most actionable items that a hospital is going to respond to once they get information back. And they also might not enter into that top box score or the performance in a way that's going to be usable for consumers. So what do you think are the next steps for the hospital field and for CMS in modernizing the HCAPS survey? Sure. So the report that we did with the other national hospital associations outlines a number of different suggestions for CMS to consider in modernizing the survey. And I'll, I'll talk about just a couple of them here. The first is adding an electronic way to respond to the survey. Right now, the only permitted methods to submit survey data are mailed surveys, telephonic surveys, or a mixed mode of those two things. Quite frankly, in the 21st century, it's hard to fathom that you can't fill out a patient experience of care survey online. Uh, and so we think CMS really needs to move in that direction and offer that up as an option. We also think the length of the survey itself is something that needs to be reconsidered. Uh, we kind of want to apply what's called the all and just principle. We want to ask all the questions we need to get meaningful information and just those questions that we need. Patient time is valuable. It's one of the most valuable resources we have. And so we need to use that time wisely to capture just the information uh, that's essential to helping us improve care and give them a picture of what's happening inside the hospital. 
There's also a lot of uh, agreement that the literacy level of the survey is too high, meaning it's hard to understand these questions depending on where you're coming from. So we have patients from all walks of life and we wanna make sure we're asking these questions in a way they understand. You're not going to get a good answer if you ask a question the patient doesn't understand. So we need to think about not just what questions we're asking, but how we're asking them too. And the other issue that we think CMS should do additional research, uh, CMS, but ARC and you know we are happy to, to help with this too, uh, is how the social determinants of health and socio-demographic factors influence what the answers look like. We want to make sure we're giving the highest quality experience to all patients and making sure we're capturing the differences in how patients from various populations experience care. So those social determinants uh, are going to make a, a big difference. And CMS, the federal government, is looking a lot into how to incorporate those social determinants of health into their programs. And I think HCAPS is a prime example of, of where that can make a huge difference in the information we're getting and the usability of it. Thanks. That's very helpful. Appreciate your time today and uh, look forward to further conversations about HCAPS. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, will oversee the retooling of the HCAP survey with input from the AHA and others, including patients. The hope for the new and improved version is the capture of information that will allow hospitals and health systems to provide the best possible patient experience. For more information about HCAPS, see www.aha slash guides reports. That's one word, guides reports. This has been Advancing Health, a podcast from the American Hospital Association. Thanks for listening.